are back again. We are playing some Disco Elysium today. Pursuing our investigation into day four. I apologize for missing the stream yesterday. I was not feeling very good. But we are back. We are better than ever. We have a new logo you might have seen. We've got a new intro. We got some intro music. It's all pretty great. Um, but yeah, let's see what we got going on day four. It would help if I had my game capture device on here correctly. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Let's see what nonsense we can get up to. Okay. Day four. Get yourself organized. Oh, yeah. Make Titus give up Ruby's location. Make Eric jam hardcore. Hmm. Oh, you know what I never did? <coughs> I never made sure. I never stopped to see if I could um, alter this letter. Okay. White envelope. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period. Interfacing, okay. I feel like I already have maybe the best thing in my toolkit for interfacing. Yeah. Do I have any skill points? Sure. Take the legal documents out of the envelope. With a confident flourish, you complete your forgery. What do you see on the signature line? Indeed, they look distinctly different and very convincing. These might as well be their actual signatures, but they're not. And the document will be nullified if they dispute it. That means Everard will have to start over. All you need to do now is mail the signatures to Everard's accountant in La Delta. Hmm. Did I ever look you at take him? the legal document. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. Yes. The lieutenant's posture becomes rigid and uncomfortable as you lean forward and sniff the area just above his shoulder blade. The lieutenant is fastidious as a cat in matters of his personal upkeep. And yet, in the folds of his jacket, you can just perceive the stale and acrid traces of oil rags, transmission fluid, and brake pads. Wait, wait. There's something else there. Something that sets your GABA receptors aflutter. The Lieutenant's Aftershave, a common drugstore brand. Strong hints of pine needle. But what sort of ideological picture do these smells paint? Tough to say. Do you need something, Detective? Uh, all right then. A moment passes. The lieutenant glances at the sports watch on his wrist. <laughs> oh. 
why... Why does she care about the waves so much? What is it with waves and fishermen? We need to be out there with them. Fishing, making a living. So I asked them to accommodate me. But until that happens, I can try to assist you the best I can. Okay, so first things first, let's go try to find a cryptozoologist. He is somewhere further up the coast. Or so we've been told. Who's that? And Mikhail noticed the windows. Especially with how there are no windows on the south side. This was to deal with. You officers, come to investigate the historic subtext of West Martinez? I'm Tran Heilostam. You must be Kim Kisuragi, right? I was just telling my son about this building. Not a lot of people realize the historic significance here. Very rich in hypertext. Bear with me for just one second. One moment here. <clears throat> okay. Nice to meet you. Oh yes, so Mikhail, they had to deal with monitor glare, especially in the summer. They still had vector monitors back then, that was 49 years ago. So they didn't have windows on the south wall. Yes, hypertext, young carp, and the collection of cultural hyperlinks. No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Ken, of course. Mikhail, say hi to the officers. Mikhail's a little tired today. We spent all night trying to run Orbis on his radio computer. Have you heard of it? It's a programming language used in Grad. Quite tricky, but he wanted to play this Grad-made adventure program. We've been getting really into worms lately. The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor, or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. Just as I was telling Mikhail before, this is where the Coalition landed in 08. We could be standing on what is the most interesting landmark in Revachol West. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. Aha, but it's not just any empty old building. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn of the century cybernetics boom. It looks old and weathered, with seagulls picking apart its stone and metal carcass. Bushy undergrowth has taken hold of the collapsed rooftop. Some kind of bird has set up a nest on a broken windowsill. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferro tape manufacturer remains. They started out as a midway electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still. Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Felt had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, they were developing 
an ace up their sleeve. I'm mixing my metaphors here. It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. Which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Rehm, ICN and Zam, haven't achieved yet. Huh, so he there's no personal something computers. like a combat stance, facing the wind. Indeed. What? The revolution! Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building, or one of the adjacent ruins. All of this was built by Feld, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Feld built this side of town for R&D. Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes, to lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before it felt arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. Oh, I'm afraid it didn't end well for the boys. But this story is a bit too dark for little Mikael here. Now, if you were to ask about tape computers... He means that the boys got shot by the communists. The boys were bourgeois. Tape computers. They used them for military communications, but also to write and send out press releases, the most notorious example being Le Decret de Mars. What's the Mars Decree? I mean the radio transmission sent out to news agencies and world governments by the newly created Commune of Revachol on the 7th of March in the year 02. A short-lived legislative foundation for a short-lived utopia. It's a beautiful piece of text, actually. A singer-songwriter I know, Charette, called it a love poem to River Shawl on her political concept album, Bon Bessier dans le Lind. You should read it. Every local library in River Shawl stocks a copy of the decree. I tried to get Mikhail to memorize it. Tried to. Someone was much too interested in worms to be paying any attention. The kid takes a peek at the green and silver worm on the cover of the book, already forgetting about this part of the discussion. Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien-looking, turn-of-the-century hardware. Buckle up. Ten years ago, I did a little... freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womti Domti Dom Center in Vredeport, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions the with the Dumpty Doms, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... Wait, did he just say Wompty Dumpty Dom Center? He did it. He said Wompty Dumpty Dom Center, like it's the most natural thing in the world. What the hell is a Wompty Dumpty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Yost? The Wompty Dompty Dom Center for Contemporary Art. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ockerman, chose to... <laughs> in fact, I'm not. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredefort and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary <laughs> art research center. <clears throat> but perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. 
It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Made of black film and folding tape structures. Very, very cool. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to this precious device. But so they did. The felt playback experiment vanished into the fires of 07. Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. Either way, they're all gone now. All three versions of the prototype. Nothing but debris and ashes remain inside that mm. building. But of course, what else? No, thanks to you for having me and little Mikaela here to pick your brain. A very interesting conversation indeed. Pick your brain? If anything, this was rather one-sided. He did the talking. Whatever. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is the shadow of a collapsing staircase. No, I won't even try. You know, I had a partner once. They called him Eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I pass my shooting courses 7 out of 10. His <laughs> hands lead the way when it comes to that. And his shoulders. It's reflex. Dumpty Dumpty Dom Center. <laughs> Once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R and D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Looks like tomorrow never came. Okay, so this is where I found the jacket. Oh wow, I was just like, a little, I wasn't that far away from here, because this is where we found the dead man. Listen. A 
scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Hmm, correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez's sense. Grim affairs. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. What a, what a novel idea. Visual calculus. Okay. Logic, that, that'll work. Scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, unable to piece together the big picture just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. The scattering of bullet holes looks like one giant. Hmm. Wonder where. Yeah, it's been a while. This is our cryptozoologist. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gem. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. Is that the police? Why are the police here? Carry the crypto Don't fashion. Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Hey, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken. We can't go all the way around the 881. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. 
His hands are large and weather-worn, but also used to delicate, precise work. For all his passion, this man is diligent and patient. You could learn things from him. Which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds, laying traps for him. Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialised techniques to protect itself from predators or scientists in our present case. It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defences that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defences work, much less how they evolve, without studying a live specimen. I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, uh... Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defences, find out how it stayed hidden so long, would be glory itself. Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. There was a credible sight in here recently. A pair of teenagers described a creature that matched the Insulindian phasmid to an uncanny degree, despite not knowing what it was themselves. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. He means asexual reproduction. The females of the species don't need to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it easier for a species with a small population to survive. Yes, the Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I'll try my best to remain dispassionate. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly. So I'm sure they'll do the trick. Yes. Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect? Does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior? This seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your scepticism. Not a big fan of scepticism, this one. 
They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using Locus as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Yes. What? And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's hers. Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <coughs> Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian Phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Good. A good quality to have both for a police officer and an experimental zoologist. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Yes, indeed. <laughs> both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, Persistence. There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula, by the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower, after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope. And among them, you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That seemed like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? Is it? If you think it's important, you have been right before. Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the sight of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. <laughs> I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Finally! Someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid-related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later, too. I've just always liked animals and puzzles. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up, if you prod a little. No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden 
is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid, of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long. About 2,000 have been wow. confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. Yes, the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Indeed. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world will report on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. It's not Charles' play. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often. Real. I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. Indeed, my methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly <laughs> surprising might happen. No, as I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid, although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. Hmm, hmm, interesting. Something for later, this close call. Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts, like the one that brought us here, to look for the Fazmin. I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration, not real research, and certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot, and both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places. Yes? All right. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what we would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it, since you've offered to help. A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialist would find rather dull. Willow people? Not at all. They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals, as they seem to have evolved directly from trees. <sighs> They're very, very thin, almost flat in fact, and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender color was hoping one of the willow people would get pain on it and not be able to camouflage itself. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic, 
he makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. By all means. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted... to unlock a thought cabinet. How long is that gonna take? 42 minutes, that's not very long. Kind of light on leads today. We only have a few things that we've got to do. There was nothing out here. Um, trying to. Okay, where did he say? Near the boathouses. Sand dune. Wow. I bet this is it. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. The reeds shake sadly in the coastal breeze. Snow specks the stalks. Most of it melts quickly. The reeds seem to be waiting for something. The wind picks up here, near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. I meant no offense, just... Okay, we've already been all the way out here. Do I have stuff for perception? It's minus one to perception. And eye coordination. What is that? Is that a. That's a hat. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Got nothing that helps with perception. Let's continue. At least we know what we're looking for now.
we... Here the boathouse is. West of the Feld building. West of the Feld. West of the Fell Building. So you had a talk with Andre, and now you want to discuss things with Noid. Good. It's good you talked to Andre first. Gave me time to get a reading on your sign. Can't really talk to people before you get a reading. Yeah, gotta compare. See if we can align. I suck at socialising, man. Even now, our sign synchronisation is way off. But I'll see what I can do. A sticker? You mean the yellow one? Can you describe it to me? Interesting. He wants you to describe it, though he already knows what it looks like. Good, good. What did you want to know? Simplicity was brought to us by classical solarist modernism, but that was a tasteful, harmonious simplicity, right? Well, hardcore is not tasteful or outwardly harmonious. It's a warning shot. This will be dangerous. The echo of man's loss haunting him. The sticker, the clothes, the music, same thing. It is. Yes, you're the 23rd person to get it right. And I've asked 23 people. <laughs> Looks like it's a dead guy smiling to the entire human race. We're all the same. Same eyes, same smiles, same death. He defeated history. We are living in the age of history. And in the eyes of history, we are always already dead. How can we ever smile then? Because history is a lie, and so are its deaths. The present moment and life are the hardcore. The hardcore expels death. Or maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's just really ecstatic about the beats. Or drugged out of his mind, come to think of it. Yeah, that interpretation holds. Well, I guess one could write an entire treatise on the thing, but what for? The hardcore aesthetic is esoteric. It's not meant to be discussed with the law at this moment. Nah. Hmm. Still strongly out of sync. Stage gamma disalignment. You heard me. Hi again. So, uh, how things going? Goodbye, officer. Maybe it was him? The large headed youth. Good morning, comrade. Yeah! Yeah! Spins the tape until the space This might escape. be fucked up. Yeah! Okay. Communism Hang on. Hang on. Before I do this. The launch. Good morning, cop tape! Yeah! Alright! No! No, no! This is gonna make people scared! Keep it positive! Keep the love in the house! Communism forever! Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? And? What happened? Oh man, the crab man you mean? Who is he? What did you think?
Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Yeah. Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice, friendly hyper time? I guess it's not a massive problem, now that I think of it. Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? Come on, ma'am. Who will you trust? The spooky programmer or us? We just want to make the world a better place. <laughs> feel the love! Get down and feel it! A half-hearted sell of something which does not seem worth buying. You'll get there, believe me. When we've got our gear set up, things will be flowing and pumping. Anyway, now that it's settled, how did she seem? I mean, disposition-wise, about the dance club idea. Yeah, Oda 9. Rocking it or dropping it? Come on, man. Feel the love! A half-hearted sell of... You'll get there, believe me. Anyway, okay. now that it's settled, how did she... What a pity. That's my favourite thing in the world. And she doesn't like it at all. A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser-lit future of dance and unity? Unity! Dance! And you can't just evict her? Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's odd. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam. A little <laughs> slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries, we'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? Excellent! Good luck, my friend. Oh, yeah, that's a meteor and name for the founding party. Thought it'd be cool to use it. If you don't know what the Founding Party is, there might be a way to mask it with minor demagoguery. Come to think of it, I've never really looked them up, you know. I can't give you a precise definition, but they're a very powerful religious organisation. And they have roots in ancient mass society. And they're the custodians of the Periconassian Church. Plus, they anoint the innocents. They, like made the innocentic system, no? Totally. The Periconassian church is about love. <laughs> and Nordic music is about love. I got love for my Periconassian posse. Love is the relay out of death. We dance. Love is hardcore. Unity. Unity! Make some noise for my Insulindian posse! Yeah! Do it for the masses. Do it for the crew. I didn't want to say it, 
But it was pretty lame of you to imply otherwise. Anyway, <laughs> you got more questions? <laughs> I don't know why I like these guys. He's still looking at you, nodding his head, waiting for your body to start moving. You feel like you could go for a little disco when or if they get this club going. You've got it in you. Goodbye, officer. Okay, let's go check the rest of the traps. I'm kind of, like, not done with this area, but we've been in this area for a long time. I'd like to get back to town. <laughs> okay. So it said... Boathouse west of this building, right? That's where they were. Okay, where's... They must mean down here. One is definitely by the canal. Yeah. A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds bend forlornly toward the sand. Some tufts have been crushed. Snow covers the broken stalks like a shroud. In the east, the city center hums to you. The constant, distant song. Louder on this part of the coast nearer somehow and there's that cold again always the cold this trap is also full of panicked locusts no sign of any cryptozoological beast inside another empty trap always up for a good jug otherwise would i still be on this case with you <laughs> Drivers smoking on hitch steps. Just silence. Chemically sweetened, across the road, a forgotten bus stop. Corrosion has opened the hole in its roof. An elm tree watches over the building. Its branches are dripping with rain and snow. The road is smooth and motley. Craters filled with a black asphalt. The asphalt first laid is gray already. A row of tenements are under construction in the distance. A tub warm with water, white with soap. A man bathes while radio waves transmit the lottery numbers. Four, 18, 21, four, one. A modern washing machine rattles a drawer full of silverware. Number 312D. Young girls used to come here mm. huddled up hoping for more warmth than their thin coats give them. The bus took them to school. It has not run for eight years. There were not enough girls to sustain its cost. Craters popped the surface. Children played in them until heavy trucks full of black pitch rolled in. The landowners have filled the craters with money. It is a vital artery of the flow of trade. 
There's one bump on the road. A dead dog lies flat about 200 paces away, right at the turn. Tragedy comes from the wheels of a fast RCM vehicle, hurrying to work. The cold washes over you. The sound of the sea has grown distant. The wind moves the aerosol. A detective stands behind the boom barrier. A breeze moves a curl of his hair. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, so... Check the trap near boathouses west of the Feldberg. There's the Feld building. Ah, there we are. This trap's not too hard to spot once you know what to look for. Keeping it hidden has not been a priority for the cryptozoologist. Behind you, the ruins of a residential building loom over the reeds. They whisper amongst themselves, confidently. Snowflakes cling to their shivering stems. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Empty as all of them. One more of these and we are done. No, no, I'm fine. I didn't mean to complain, it's just... <laughs> okay. This is the last of the traps. The one Morel just set. Checking it over, he said, is just a technicality. The reeds by the abandoned campsite sway and tremble while the snow falls all around. It's good the cryptozoologists left. This isn't a very cozy place to stay night after night. The later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out. You feel strange, somehow. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Something is different here. No locusts. No phasmid either, but still. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. The netting is a little untidy. Messier than the others. Like someone or something picked the trap up and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Perhaps our cryptozoologists have competition in the form of an actual entomologist, or someone else is sabotaging them. I could present more theories, but then I would be taking this on as a case, which I'm not. Okay, but after that we get back to our own assignments. There is no justification for this detour at this point of our investigation. We have a lot of work to do back in town. Wompty dumpty dum <laughs> You're at home, stupid cop. Not with the art crowd. You hate them. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on sprezzatura and sparkling wine. And, let's be honest, tax evasion schemes. The Wompty Dumpty Dom Center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. Oh, hey. So, encyclopedia passives give me um, a bunch of 
bunch of um, XP. That's pretty cool. Do I have anything else that helps with Encyclopedia? Let's go get the, um, let's go back to town. Let's, I inspected the traps. Get yourself organized. Let's add beauty to the wall. Let's see if Cindy will give us that brush. My encyclopedia is pretty good, so... I don't think he had anything, right? I want to say that the Eggman told me to come in here uh, because he might have records, but... I don't know if he actually did. You see rows of toys. Top of the morning to you. How may I be of service? Sure thing. Maybe. Shady looking guys came in here yesterday. They went their way. It was a trip. But you know, all sorts of people come here asking oh. for all sorts of things. Maybe Claire really is tracking down your gang. Hmm. People as oleaginous as Evera seem like they're lying, even when they're really being truthful. Sure, man. All the old... A typical Martinez street... 700 real. A bargain, I dare say. There's also the matter of rewiring. <laughs> the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjusted its morphological field. The light became suitable for use inside the home just a few days ago. That's hilarious. One thing about this map, Hangman, Man from Heimdall series. Oh, mirror? Huh. 
that's one brutal motor carriage. If I were a real skull now, I'd jack it, paint it in palm tree livery, then bottom light it, neon style. A snazzy shit-ripped skull mobile like this would make a fine trophy. We could, like, hang fucking shrunken heads from the side mirrors. Cops' heads. Scary tribal shit. Yeah, tribal shit. A cop carriage like this would have proper skull value. Ahem. <clears throat> Well, I appreciate the interest you take in my brutal motor carriage. I have to stop you right there. The RCM takes threats directed at its property seriously. I, um, it's just theoretical work, copper. No basis in reality. Man, if we were certified skulls right now... I can tell you who we're not, cop. We're not snitches, flow bears, or skulls. Which is not to say that the skulls are bitches and <laughs> On the contrary. The part of this presentation you want to take home with you, cop man, is we're not part of the skulls yet. Okay then, let's indulge in some intellectual exchange. These young men seem eager to share their beliefs. You don't know? What kind of cop are you? It's not a question. Don't get into it. The Skulls are the most vicious gang of the Besmertnay. Besmertai, or the Besmerti, the Immortals, are West hey. Brothersholian crime syndicates. The nastiest bunch of psychos ever. Jacking carriages and getting into high-speed chases. Possessing an infinite amount of fuck-all swagger, infamous for their non-verbal modus operandi. If a skull spots you, he will pull out his dagger and stab you without saying a word. The lieutenant's voice is as calm as usual. A testament to the violence and death he's witnessed through the sight of his firearm. They usually occupy the burnt-out quarter in Jamrock. Or you can find them loitering around the brightly painted bottom-lighted vehicles. Ah ha ha, I can't wait to become a skull. Bottom lights are wretched aggressive. Oh yeah, Cindy's a right proper skull. Yeah, a true artist of the future. Just like Arno Van Eyck. Uh, by the way, if you see Cindy, give her our regards. For all their nihilistic posturing, these young men are not lacking in youthful idealism. The lieutenant on your left is unusually lenient toward them. Hmm. Oh man, yeah! We're not fucking kids, man! Be wary of the abyss. Probably because of how non-verbal their mode of operation is going to be. It's a threat. But I don't. In fact, I dislike them so much I'm willing to drag you boys back to the station just to calm myself down. Hey, uh, there's no need for that. We're just talking here. Joking, too. Stay light, man. Yeah. Didn't you cops, like, have some questions about skulls or some shit? The Union does their share of policing in Martinez, at least where gangs are concerned. That's why there isn't much organized crime around here. Apart from the unions themselves, of course. Don't you worry about that. We're gonna make up for the deficit. Yeah, we are. We're not franchise skulls. Well, not yet. Once we get our name out there, we'll have a chance to join them. Because we can be just as psycho and vicious. You'll see. But in a non-threatening and definitely <laughs> legal way, We'll fuck the system from the inside later. Just be cool now. The damage will be tenfold. Right on, fuck. So what's happening now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about them? Well, first off, 
It's a statement and not necessarily something that characterizes me as a person, even though the statement has character. And I do like piss. The word piss f epitomizes the struggle taking place in the world. Things being defined as they seem, not as they are. And I guess it's also about communal spirit, the future, and truly appreciating our differences. Also, you've got to admit, it catches the eye. And since the Grand Piper is slowly but steadily moving towards basing the economy on it, attention, it is imperative that the medium itself convey the message. What I mean by this is, we are all piss f and that the world is inherently meaningless. It seems that the young man has a certain expertise in at least one field, even. Like I said before, many men keep searching for the one, for so-called true love, which is actually just obsession masquerading as kinship, the thrill of the chase, the hollowness that fills your chest cavity after catching it. I'm wondering if the poetics come with the jacket. Or are they derived <laughs> from something else? If to catch a fish, you'll need to hurl the law many times. And even then, it isn't certain that you'll get anything. If you blow up the lake, though, you get more fish in a shorter time. And for time is of the essence and fleeting ever so quickly, one must think of a way to fuck the whole world and not get caught up in fucking someone. Because when one fucks everything, he fucks nothing. And that, to me, feels glorious. Sticking your dick into the void. Hate to admit it, but in a weird way, he's got a point. Is it a coincidence that here we have two badass jackets and two badass cops? Yes? What is? What are you implying? I'm not sure I understand you, detective. Neither. Fine, if only to end this discussion. Theoretically, if I were a juvenile delinquent, if I were to already be down that path, I think peace is the stronger of the two statements. Seems about right, especially considering your heroic exit attempts. That's an origin story for a dynamic duo, right? <laughs> so are we done here? Or... You don't need us around for your secret whisper party, do you? Ada? Yeah, sure. We'll gladly tell you everything we know about it. <clears throat> It was a man. Also, he was hanged. He was hanged from a tree. Yeah, I mean, duh. These pumps don't know anything. Let's just move along. Hey, stop right there. How does one know anything? Ah, this sounds like epistemology. A field so occupied by thought that it begins to question thought itself. However, there is no way these young men could possibly be aware of her work. Exactly. How can one know shit? For example, how can one be sure that there truly is a body hanging behind a hostel? What if it's art? Or just a mere specter? So what do you think we know? Hmm. Yes? Ah. What about me? Good. Let- Okay, can I- That ride is fuck- Hey! Piss- Okay. So we can. Uh, okay. I just want to make sure that you could- Sometimes it, like- We'll let you try a um, red check, and sometimes if you close out of the dialogue, you never, it doesn't give you the chance at all. Half light.
I don't think I have. Okay, that'll. Okay. I don't normally save scum when we do this, but I'm made. Hey, I'm made for this. Piss. Look who it is. These guys are. Yeah, I want those jackets. <laughs> It's such a non... It's such a non-important thing to the case. I just... I want it just because it would make him mad. That ride is... Hey, piss... Look. No, no, no. Don't ask anything. Be subtle and scary. The boys dream about being skulls. Use that. Suggest their massive skulls. Come on. What? No. Skulls don't have kings. I think. And we're not even in yet. Yeah, man. Keep your voice down. Skulls don't take it lightly when folks pretend to be them. We're not even prospects yet. Prospect must be a hierarchical term. Probably in the lower end. Wow, you boys are ambitious. Only prospects <laughs> and already planning a coup in the skulls. You're destined to go far. He gets it. Passive aggressive flattery. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Are you trying to get us killed? Now bring it to the jackets and, yes, start shouting. Please be quiet. What? What do you want? Th the jackets? Oh, man. Okay. I get it. Skulls don't really wear slogans <laughs> anyway. This was stupid. Fuck. The lieutenant watches the boys take their jackets off with mild amusement. I'm absolutely okay with not having either one, thank you. This case doesn't require us to go undercover or raise hell. In fact, I don't think the jackets will be useful at all. I just wanted them to not have them anymore. Cold-hearted cop. The need will not arise. The jackets are meant to complete each other. If a man was standing alone on a street corner with piss written on his back, it'd just be an individual that has taken a liking to you, Ryan. And fuck the world all on its own is, frankly, generic. I don't know, Eric. It's cold out. <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. The cops fucked us. <laughs> That's pretty great. Well, that was fun. Fun little interaction there. Totally meaningless to everything else going on. Okay. Mailbox. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. Yes, for sending mail. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail as collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug, Everard. You know he's going to play you somehow. All right, let's go back to Everard. If we don't mention anything to him, he won't know before it's too late. Mm -hmm. Oh. That? Oh, that's the... 
viewing box. Okay, let's see if we can get this brush from Cindy. There. Do you smell that? Can you not detect that inimitable whiff of dissatisfaction and restlessness? That sense that the world is in need of dramatic, even violent, reordering? What do you smell? The first thing that strikes you is the overwhelming brine. You imagine yourself underwater, a hundred-legged anthropod scuttling along the murky silt at the bottom of the sea. But then the unmistakable reek of seagull shit hits you, buoyed along on the air currents, an acrid melody atop moldering cords of wood rot and heavy fuel oil. Everything in order, detective? Personal errand. You're developing your... You know what? I just leave you to it. Carry on, <laughs> The lieutenant lacks your highly developed politico olfactory cortex. The smell is undeniable. And it's coming from that balcony up there. Zertenemot. A precocious communist youth. A symbol of a kinder, more hopeful future. Now's your chance to establish contact with your revolutionary brothers and sisters. That's who I was heading for anyway. there before in your hands you hold 16 days of coldest april by yekatina dar the cover image shows a row of concrete apartments above which span a black and white rainbow indeed the book is unusually heavy in your hands as though the cover were lined with lead you flip through the book the pages are thinner than you realized and the type quite small and tightly set it's nearly 600 pages long. Real art is dense and difficult. If it didn't feel like you had to wrestle a suicidal bear to get through it, you weren't really reading. The back cover is dominated by a black and white photograph of the author. She can't be much older than her mid-thirties in this photograph. And yet, from this cover, the eyes of a sad old woman stare back at you. In cold, detached prose, the author describes a scene from one of the Yugo Grad riots in the 20s. Youths overturn motor carriages and set trash cans ablaze, while heavily armored guardsmen dash in and disperse them in a flurry of baton blows. The Yugo Grad riots took place from 27 to 29. Fueled by ethnic unrest and the state's repressive tactics, these events are often seen as marking the end of a brief period of liberalization known as the Yugograd Spring. Like all such periods, it is frequently memorialized in art and literature. As ethnic tensions run wild, a pair of young lovers meet each other on the street. Somehow, in the middle of all the chaos, they manage to lock arms and look into each other's eyes. It would physically hurt you to keep reading. Are you sure? You've made the right life choices today, sir. <laughs> but I did level up rather quickly. And that makes me want to... Master Car, honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. The White Star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. 
Hold on a second. Is this why you broke in here? To find out whether you're Krasmazov? Sure you are. Well, you both do seem to share an affinity for sideburns. But it seems like old Kras here didn't drink nearly as much as you. You do, but that's not the point. The point is, he doesn't look like you. Ah, very well. Let's doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? All right, but here's the big thing. Krasmasov looks Samara, and you don't. Okay, you win. Be Krasmasov then, I don't care. Why are you so hell-bent on proving that you're Krasmazov, anyway? Mm. All right, Kras, if you say so. How I get up there. Hmm. That's that dude's apartment. I know there's a way to, I just can't remember how. There's the exit. Ah, there's the other balcony. Officers, have you come to admire my mural? Oh, not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. She does have eyes that seem to be smeared with coal. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. Does anyone in a city like this? Shoot, Piggy. It's, I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. They'll never be skulls, but, but their hearts are in the right place. She throws you a conspiratorial glance, then presses her finger to her lips and squints up at the sky, as though straining to hear something in the distance. Have you noticed the quiet? Every so often, you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock. But in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. This place is a sepulcher. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. What for?
Well, if it's for art, but what kind of art are we talking about? Let me stop you right there, Piggy. You have no idea, do you? No idea. No brush? Fuck off. <laughs> there, there, Piggy. I guess art just isn't really you. Because you suck in life and in everything. Uh, conceptualization. Okay, we can do this. Conceptualization. Why does art inspire you so much? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Have you looked in the mirror lately? To be honest, you have the exact features of the modern artist, with that wild hair and those clothes. Perhaps you should try to write poetry someday and critique architecture. Yes, you seek substance. <laughs> no vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Exactly. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals of the street, you must also apprehend criminals of the printing press and the gallery. The trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. <laughs> Hello again, officers. Wow, Have is... you come to admire my mural? Okay. That was very low. Let's try this again, but I'm gonna attempt a different... a different, uh, tack. I don't really mind safe scumming stuff that's like not important. Like Okay, let's go ahead and conceptualization. Why does art okay, excellent question this. in short? Have you looked in the mirror lately? Yes, you see exactly. Yeah. Go ahead and prepare. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire? Oh. She does. Does anyone? It doesn't have. The inspiration will come. Shoot, piggy. It's. I don't believe it. I've never known that. There'll never be skulls, but. But their hearts are in the right place. She throws. Have you noticed that this place is a sepulchre? What for? Well, if it's for art. But what kind of art are we talking about? Sounds like you're just about to live out your self pity, not make a statement. 
I can't have shit art on my conscience. Yeah, not gonna hold my breath, Piggy. You look like... Is there... Hmm. I need that brush. Okay. She. Yes. Does anyone? It doesn't have. The inspiration. Shoot, piggy. It's what I don't believe. They'll never be scum. She. Throat. Have you noticed? This place is a. What for? What do you think I'm trying to paint here? A mural for a better tomorrow. Why do you really need it? But boring. You're not using my lovely brush to spread boredom. I ain't helping no pigs fool Gosh. honest upstanding citizens. I'm not an antisocial element. Well, if it's for art. But what kind of art are we talking about? Then you have time to find your own fucking brush. You're about to cry internally. Aren't you, Piggy? And what do you know about politics? <sighs> well, well. Sounds like quite the snout you've got there. Your olfactory department wants you to know that it accepts no responsibility for wherever this line of <laughs> interrogation leads you. Sure. I know someone who'd love to talk that ideological stuff. You're looking for Stiban, a right communist who runs a mega cool and very secret meeting. I might. No. wicked grin extends across her face. Oink for me, piggy. Just once. Wrong! This is exactly how I treat my little brother. There, that wasn't so bad, was it? It's not the worst indignity you've suffered the last several days, but it is up there. The lieutenant, needless to say, is not impressed. Sounds like you're really serious about meeting Staban. It's touching, sort of. Staban's group meets only at night, in an old room in these apartments here. It just so happens you're in luck. Their weekly meeting is tonight. Poke your snout around sometime after 10 p.m. and you might just find them. Just that he's a real communist. Not like the play acting you've been doing. The rest, you'll have to see for yourself. Oh, smart pig. Because there is. See, Stepan's a bit on the paranoid side. He's got all these mega secret passphrases to keep out infiltrators and the like. You can't join the meeting without one. Why would I? That would be so boring. Now. Let's see if you're half as dedicated a communist as you say you are. That's enough. Off with you then. Hmm. Yes. Wish that would not do that. What about me? Good. Let's change. Yeah. 
Let's go ahead and save it. Well, we've been going for about two hours. I think that just about does it for today. Tomorrow we'll get back to this and we'll see if we can sniff out that that meeting, the password. Take the uh, letter to Everard or tell Everard about the letter and see what's what's up. Anyway, if you happen to be watching this in VOD or watching uh, live, just don't hesitate to hit that playback button or that uh, follow button. Playback, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm tired. Um, don't hesitate to hit that follow button. Also, there is now, just going to say, there is now a donation button in the, um, the about section of my channel. As well as a place where you can uh, that will that will take you to a link to where you can donate to the stream, or um, there is now some merch. There's t-shirts, there's hoodies, there's hats, there's coffee mugs. I'm gonna get me one at one point for the uh, for the stream. So anyway, and uh, if none of that is appealing to you, by all means, just join back tomorrow. And I hope you guys have a nice night. You take it easy. Bye.